Obviously, we are worried about uh, methane because it's a greenhouse gas. So let's look at uh, some of the properties uh, in terms of its impact on radiation. Looking at the solar spectrum, obviously, it's a full electromagnetic spectrum going from gamma rays, X-rays, uh, what happened there, uh, all the way to uh, visible where most of the energy comes into the earth and then uh, near infrared infrared out to microwaves radio waves and so on if we quickly look at the absorption spectra at each band ultraviolet visible near ir infrared and so on <coughs> Uh, good thing is that oxy oxygen and ozone in the stratosphere absorb almost all of the UV, which is good for us because UV damages uh, all life forms, DNA and so on. And once we get into the visible spectrum, we have various uh, uh, impacts, but mostly all of them are uh, allowing it to come to uh, the surface. So there is albedo effects and so on, but uh, reflection of solar, but uh, mostly the atmosphere is transparent, so the uh, energy reaches the surface. Uh, and uh, in the near IR and IR, we have uh, CO2, H2O, and uh, the total atmosphere have having impacts at various bands. If we want to focus specifically on CO2 and then compare to methane, we can do that uh, uh, like this. So uh, the main thing to remember is that the outgoing uh, long wave of the Earth is uh, peaking around, uh, let's say, uh, at 700. So it's somewhere there. It's not so obvious here. But uh, you can see that ozone in the troposphere is not a good thing because it tends to absorb uh, outgoing long waves so it becomes a greenhouse gas so it's a beneficial uh, ingredient of the atmosphere here but producing ozone in the uh, uh, troposphere is bad for health bad for uh, crop yields and bad for global warming so that's something to remember if we zoom in uh, at co2 so you can see that uh, it's often said CO2 is band saturated. So you can zoom in here and look at the multiple peaks. Why do we do that? CO2 has many uh, uh, absorption bands. So you can see that here clearly. And each of the peak is absorbed, uh, absorbing all it can. So since 700 is a critical uh, maximum energy peak, uh, CO2 absorbs all of it at 700 at the peak, but that doesn't mean that if you increase P CO2 in the atmosphere, it cannot absorb anymore. All it means is that it has many, many smaller peaks, so the absorption, pe absorption peaks ge getting uh, broader and broader. The absorption band keeps getting broader and broader, so the other wavelengths start to get absorbed. So in the OR, uh, CO2 is bad because even though at some very high levels, uh, the absorption efficiency keeps going down, as we will see. Um, it's not saturated at the levels that uh, we are uh, right now. So obviously, we are looking at wave numbers per centimeter. So it's the frequency uh, at which these bands are being looked at. So this is the same thing for methane. And you can see that methane also has a similar uh, behavior that it can be uh, uh, band saturated at its peak uh, but it has in, uh, lots of uh, other bands frequencies at which it is able to uh, absorb more and more so band saturation does not mean that putting more methane and oxygen is going to reduce uh, global warming okay so here looking at infrared energy flux to space in watts per meter squared um, and looking at the concentration of uh, methane and CO2. You can see that CO2 will continue to absorb uh, energy in the infrared for a long time, way out to 5000 uh, ppm, and methane remains high at uh, above 300 uh, watts per meter squared uh, when you go to uh, Obviously, this is an incredibly high amount of methane. Me remember, methane is two orders of magnitude smaller than CO2, so we have to be uh, careful. Okay. Nonetheless, uh, this is how methane affects uh, 
uh, radiation balance and uh, global warming. Just to uh, add some more details, for carbon dioxide, the radio radiative forcing follows very closely a simple logarithmic function of concentration. Perhaps this is because CO2 absorption peak that we just looked at near 700 uh, per centimeter, that's the frequency. The climatically important one, because that's the peak, it's nearly perfectly cone-shaped when plotted in log linear space. So it absorbs at the peak all of, the, all of it and with increasing CO2 it keeps broadening the spectrum uh, at which it absorbs the wave frequencies. Um, because of the logarithmic curve, the radiative forcing is proportional to the number of doublings uh, of atmospheric CO2 concentration, which can be calculated as radiative forcing in watts per meter squared. Additional energy you would get because of increasing CO2 as minus 3.5 watts per meter squared times uh, the natural log of PCO2 divided by 280, which is the baseline of the pre-industrial uh, atmospheric concentration, divided by lo lo natural log of 2, which is because of the doubling that we are talking about. Right? Remember the climate sensitivity that we talked about, where you ramp up the CO2 to double the concentration of a given base, and then you keep it there till equilibrium to see what the warming we uh, will end up with. Since equilibrium temperature of the Earth scales linearly with radiative forcing, it is also linearly dependent on the number of CO2 concentration doublings, which means if we uh, plot the cumulative CO2 uh, versus global warming, that line is almost linear. So in IPCC you see this a lot when we look at the uh, various scenarios. So the total amount of CO2 in gigaton CO2 is shown and warming is shown and those lines are nearly linear because there is this relation. This has been used to argue uh, how much time we have left to save the planet because you can take the global warming target, you can back out the amount of CO2 that will get us there, you can take the current emission rates and then say how many years till we get there. But this is a dangerous argument that we have only 7 years left or 10 years left and so on. Okay, so don't there are many issues uh, involved there. Okay, so the temperature change in terms of climate sensitivity then would be uh, delta 2x where this is the climate sensitivity of doubling CO2 times natural log of PCO2 divided by 280 divided by log uh, 2. Okay, so that's a simple uh, conversion from uh, radiative forcing to warming based on this uh, linear dependence on cumulative uh, CO2. Okay, so we will leave it there and then go come back to uh, how methane uh, is uh, balanced in the atmosphere when we look at the sources and sinks and what is the rate at which uh, it will decay if we uh, reach an equilibrium state in terms of the uh, production and um, so sources and sinks okay production and scrubbing let's say okay